Welcome to Powercraft TV, where your creative soul gets to have fun. On today's episode, we are going to be talking to Jane Blows from Canada. She's going to show you her art and talk about what inspires her. She has also prepared a very cool flower tutorial, big flower for you to make. You're going to love this. We are going to get to know more about one specific product of the PowerPoint line, and I have that amazing deal for you. Yes, I know you're waiting for. I'm Shahar Boyay, I'm your host today. Let's get started. I'm excited to introduce our guest for today, but I want to remind you that in a little bit, I'm going to show you the special offer that we have today. So keep tuned. And now let's get to talk to Jane. How are you doing today, Jane? I'm good. How are you, Shahar? Very good. Tell us where you're talking from. I am in a little town called Redcliffe, Alberta, in the mm. southeastern corner of the province in Canada. I bet it's very beautiful there. It is, and we're only about six kilometers from a larger city. So, you know, we're kind of rural, but not. So it's, it's a very <laughs> good place. Yeah. Tell me how you got started with art since you're a little girl, later in life. How, tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, as a child, I was, I was sickly quite a bit. So I stayed home a lot and I just loved art uh, apart from schoolwork. And I've done lots of things over the years from macrame, paper toll, crochet, all kinds of stuff, teddy bears. So I've dabbled in a lot of different uh, artwork. That's cool. And then what happened? Well, and then I watched Curious Mondo. Oh, and really? Saw, yes, absolutely. <laughs> and I saw Bev Olawa doing the herons. And I fell in love with them and her techniques. So I thought, I've got to do this. So it took me a while, but I found a distributor about an hour and a half from where I live and I took a drive and bought some powder pole and came home and started making herons. And the rest is history, right? That's so cool. So glad yeah. to hear that. Yeah. Now, Jane, tell me, do you, uh, do you make pieces just for yourself? Do you sell them? Do you give classes? I do both. Now, I took my certified powder pole instructor course in October of 2019. Unfortunately, I had a couple courses then and the pandemic took over. So mm -hmm. I haven't had any in-person courses since March of 2020. Um, but you know what, we're getting there and I think at some point soon we'll be able to do some more courses again, so. Are you guys open at this moment? Can you, can you give classes right now or still have to wait a little bit? Well, I probably could give classes if people were vaccinated and wearing masks, but I choose not to at the moment. Um, mm -hmm. Just I've got a lot going on in my life all the time. So I, I would think probably within the next month or two, we'll be back up and our numbers are coming down considerably here. So now we are going to see a lot of your work later, but what usually inspires you to create and and do you navigate more towards human figures or animals? Well, I've got a little bit of both, and I think other people's art inspires me, but nature inspires me as well. So I go out and I see something like, oh, that's interesting. I think I could do something with that. Um, although I've got a bunch of stuff in my basement that I haven't done anything with yet, but once I get the time, I will. So. Now, how do you approach your art? Because I know you told me before you came or you still are in the finance world, right? Which is a very logical kind of, of work. Uh, what is your approach when you're creating? Is it a logical thing or do you go crazy and experiment? What, what, what is it? Well, I would say a little bit of both, depending on what I'm doing, right? Um, I do like things to be the way you know they're supposed to be but i'm trying to get out of that control and let it flow as it is uh-huh and you're happy with whatever result you get or do you have ten thousand critics inside your head oh i have lots of critics inside my head but <laughs> for the most part 
I'm happy with what what is made. So <laughs> that's very cool. That's very cool. So you, one thing you did was to prepare this beautiful flower for us to see the tutorial. Sh can you show us the flower and talk a little bit about it? And what has inspired you to create this type of flower? Well, I love sunflowers, and I thought I can make something like that. But unfortunately, this one isn't isn't actually a sunflower. Uh -huh. I painted it in blues and purples. But I have a larger one outside in my yard that is painted with yellows and greens. Oh, nice. But I really like these flowers. I think they're pretty and they, you know, they stand up outside. And uh, yeah. Yeah. So I hope everybody in this course. Oh, I bet they will. I love some flowers too. I think, you know, the, the, they have this posture. Of, Give me the sunlight, right? It's so cool. It's such a beautiful. I know. The colors are so pretty in them, right? Yes, so, yes, yeah. they are. They are. I think so. You use one outside. I can see. I could use that on the center of a table, or hanging on my door, right? Yeah. When I sent one to one of my best friends, and she has it on a plate stand in her kitchen. See? So, yes. Yeah, and she loves it. Mine's outside on my fence, and I just put it on with little cup hooks. Uh huh. That's so cool. That's so cool. I'm excited. What do you say we show them the very first segment because that's where you talk about what they need and start the process. What do you say? That sounds fantastic. Exciting. Let's get to watch part number one of our flower. Hi everyone. My name is Jane Blows and I'm a certified power pole instructor in Redcliffe, Alberta, Canada. Today I'm going to show you how to make an outside garden flower like this one only smaller. This one is 17 inches across. And what we're going to do today is make one that's probably around 10 to 11 inches once it's finished. I buy these wreath frames at the dollar store that comes in two. We only need one. Also, we need a styrofoam ball that is going to just fit inside of the middle of the wreath frame. And we'll cut this in half and that'll be the center of the flower. We need a 100% cotton white t-shirt and I buy these at the dollar store as well. I think they're $1.25 at the dollar store. We need black paver pole, some paver plast, paver sand in black, and then I also use some acrylic paint, Josephine's varnish, which is a paver pole product, and also mother of pearl with um, paver color, which is a paver pole product. I hope you enjoy this course and we'll see you soon. Thanks. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the seams and the uh, fold at the end of the t-shirt um, as I don't want to use those on my flower. Um, I'm just going to use a rotary cutter and a cutting board and I'm going to cut through them. And then I'm also going to make the strips of t-shirt that I require for the petals of the flower. And because it's a smaller flower, I'm going to make them approximately an inch to an inch and a half in, in width. Um, for, this, for the bigger flower, I did approximately two inch. Um, so I'm just gonna start and cut all along my t-shirt. These do not have to be perfect, obviously. That one isn't. Um, and then I'm gonna cut them into smaller st um, strips after that. So once I've got them all cut, I'm gonna cut the ends off. I'm gonna cut them into Take our, our um, wreath frame, our styrofoam ball will go here, and then we will start working out. So that's approximately how long I want to make, make them. So I'm going to make them all about approximately four inches in length. So I'm cutting my strips into four inches and I need approximately 20 
of the strips to go around the flower. And I'm going to use the same amount to go around the flower for the second um, layer of petals, just so I can bunch them up and make them a little wavy and curly and, and stuff. So that it looks, I think it looks a lot, a lot nicer that way. So cut them all. And I mean, you can keep these littler ones and we will um, use them as well for the inside of the petals and get those all ready for yourself. And then we will start with the putting it together with the flower. So I think we should have enough there. So also what I did it, when I put the petals on or before I put the petals on, I kind of went through them and I gave them each a little bit of a point just so that I've got a little bit of an angle on most of some of the petals. Um, you don't have to do it to all of them, but to some of them would be great. So this is what I've, I've been doing on our flowers just to give them a little bit um, more of a petal looking, I don't, you know. So once you do all that, we will start, we will cut the styrofoam ball in half and we will get it attached to the wire frame. And this as well does not have to be perfect. It, um, and you don't even have to do it if you don't want, but I liked the fact that they had a bit of a point on each of the petals. And you know what, you could always use these little cutoffs to give some more texture around the styrofoam ball as well once you're all finished. So it's up to you, it's abstract. You can do whatever you want and um, to make it more yours. Some of these I think I cut a little bit too, too wide. So I'm just going to take off a little bit of it and uh, make it a little bit skinnier. So. so I, with my styrofoam ball, I just go by the seam that's already there. I'm using a knife that used to be sharp, quite sharp, that I used for in the kitchen. Um, but it's now very dull and it's not being sharpened. So I will just go along that seam of the ball. And then I will just keep going along until I've got it cut in half. Of course, this ball is giving me a little bit more trouble than I thought. So that is what we will use for the middle of our flower. So this is my wreath frame. And like I say, I bought it at the dollar store. And it's about eight and a half inches in diameter. And this styrofoam ball, I want it to go right in the middle like that. So what I'm going to do is I have my, I have rebar tie wire. You can just get it at any of the um, home improvement stores. It's used for tying rebar and uh, pouring concrete. So I'm going to cut a few of these. I want f at least four and I'm going to go approximately from the middle of the ball out. So. I'm cutting this wire is, let's see, it is almost, not quite five inches, but four and three quarter inches or 12 centimeters. So I want four of these. So 
So what I'm gonna do with these is I'm going to poke them into the styrofoam ball, and then I'm going to use them to, to twist them onto this, the wire frame, wreath frame. And that will hold it in place so that it's not moving around and um, it'll be stable when you've got it out in the garden. So it's like that. And I'm just gonna take my pliers and I'm going to wrap these wires around the frame. So you want the, the styrofoam ball to be in approximately the middle. And I'm just gonna use my fingers and just bend the wire over for now. So I've got it approximately in the middle. Okay. So then I'm gonna twist the wire with my needle nose pliers. And I'm all, all times trying to keep the ball, the center as, well, the styrofoam ball as centered as possible. Okay, so the next part is to cover the ball with um, power pole. And I'll get that all mixed up and ready to go. So I've, I've put down, I've got a large Lazy Susan and I've got a piece of acrylic that I like to use with a bigger project, obviously with the larger flower, but I'll use it as well with the smaller flower. And although it's acrylic, I can probably chip off the um, dried on power pole, but I still like to cover it with saran wrap because the power pole will not stick to the saran wrap and I do not want my flower sticking to this and then it um, trying to get it off and it distorts it. So I still cover all of my area with saran wrap just to be on the safe side so that when I'm ready to take my flower off and it's ready to go outside or dry, then I've got it. Um, it can, I can take it off of the surface really really easily so there we go Wow, exciting. I, I know I have all these things at home, right? But what about you? What about you? Do you have everything that you need? Well, I got some of the things she's going to be using in this tutorial, as you just saw, and made this amazing offer for you. So time to pay attention. Deep breath. Yes, look at this offer. So this week, you're going to get the Power Pole Black, right? You, you know how they love Power Pole Black, right? We are going to get the Power Sand in black, just like she's using on the tutorial, and the Mother of Pearl uh, Power Color, right? Well, if you were to go to the website and, and buy it one by one, you would be paying $54.70 for that. Do you know how much you can get it for today? <gasps> and just today, and just as supplies last, you can get this for $43.55. Oh, look at the savings you have there. $43. I got so excited, I lost, I lost what I was saying. $43.55. And of course, I'm going to throw in a whole collection of rhinestones that you can add to your flower or to other pieces, all for free. Normally, is is written right here, four dollars and fifty cents. That's another savings because you get this one for free. 
Think about this awesome kit for you to create your first flowers. They will make an amazing gift for the holidays if you want. How do you do this? Well, there is a button that you can click here or you look at the site going under the video. That's the place for you to get, right? Whew, I'm so excited. I'm going to start doing the happy dance. And Jane, why don't you do the happy dance with me too? Huh? Isn't that f cool? Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a great offer. It is, it is, and people can get many flowers out of those. Now I want to see some of the pieces that you have created. Would you show us some? I think this always inspire people to create. Oh, look at the little girl. Oh, cool. Girl. Also have his, their little puppy with them. That's and cool. She's, got, she's holding on to a balloon. Uh-huh, that's very cool. Tell me how you did the fur on the dog. So that is with powder cotton. I made the dog out of tin foil, and then I covered it with some tape, and then I covered him with powder cotton dipped in um, transparent with some brown in, in, in powder brown in it. So mm -hmm. Very, color. very cool. You know, I have a, a thing for girls with balloons. I actually needle felted <laughs> one also holding a balloon. I think they tell a lot of stories and I, I don't know, bring us back to our own childhood, right? Because I was very fortunate to have some balloons in my life to carry. Yes, I think so too, right? They're, they're amazing. So, and here's another one that I've got of just a girl with a, an umbrella. I love that umbrella. Yeah. So the umbrella I put over top of a bowl that I covered with saran wrap and let it dry. And then I attached it to a wire. Uh-huh. Yeah. And her That's hair a great too, tip. Her hair is powder cotton as well. And her mm -hmm. dress is um, cotton fabric. Nice, nice. And you use the transparent in her, in her dress as well? Yes, transparent in the dress and transparent for the umbrella. So I could get the, I wanted the texture or the color uh -huh. of the fabric to show out and it looks kind of like it's got raindrops on it. Yes, it's very cool. So this would be a piece that would be better to keep inside, correct? Yes, I mean, you could put it outside. Um, it's cotton, so it should mm -hmm. be okay. But I would suggest that you varnish it either okay. with a spray varnish non yellowing before you put it outside. Uh huh. Yeah, I <laughs> because just... I heard the, the transparent sometimes is not the best option to put outside while the other yeah, colors the color are very will, safe. Yeah, the color will fade, but if you put it with a UV um, protection of a, of a, either a spray varnish or the Josephine varnish, it should be okay for outside. That's very cool. Do you have another one to show us? Sure, this is one of my favorite ones. I don't know how it, it'll get into the screen. Oh, oh but look a, at that dress. It's a ballerina. Uh-huh. Pretty, it's quite tall. I think it's it's probably a good 18 to two feet tall. So wow, it's probably nice. really, really pretty. But she's one of my favorite. Uh -huh. And um, the shirt is from a um, bedspread. Uh -huh. and of course, and it, it's in black powder pole. And then I've covered it with a blue paint, uh, acrylic Ooh. paint, and some sparkles on that I bought at the uh, dollar store. Ha, <laughs> look so at that. I don't know if you could see the sparkles very good, but it, it does. Yeah, the glitter. Yeah, it does. The glitter. And I love the action that she has there. That's very cool. Yeah, I really like hers. So, yeah. so I, I noticed you have a thing for kids, right? Uh, you showed two pieces, for example, that represent kids. Tell, yes. tell me a, a little bit about this passion. Well, I just thought, I think kids are so free and they, you know, they do what they want to do and they have no encumbrances against them, right? So mm -hmm. it's, their action is, is beautiful That's and so fun cool. and free. Yes. So, yeah. And we need to remind ourselves to be like that a little bit more as well, right? Sometimes we get I, too hooked up on the fact that we are adults, but we need to play. Yes, yes absolutely. Now, I know that after watching the show today, people are going to want to get in touch with you, especially those that are close to you. Uh, because even, even though you're going to schedule classes in a month or so, I, I believe you're going to have a waiting list. So how can people get in touch with you? 
So I have a website, it's in the process of being updated by my granddaughter, and it's mobearedesigns.com, or you can contact me at mobearedesigns at yahoo.ca. Nice. Uh, tell me the story behind this name. Do you like bears? Uh, what is it? Yeah, I started making teddy bears and I sell oh. them as well. Uh -huh. And uh, my grandkids call me Mo. Um, so, it was a, actually a joke that my husband had. But anyways, they call me Mo, so I call it Mo Bear Designs. Very cool. Very cool name. Very cool name. Jane. Let's go watch together the second part of this tutorial. We want to see this flower taking shape. Is that okay? Yes, um, yes. Let's watch. So I've got the black power pole. I'm going to open it up. This is a, a one that I've already used. So make sure that when you open them up that you stir them because it does settle. And you want to stir it to make sure that everything is incorporated into um, the mix. So from here, I'm going to mix it with some Paverplast. So I'm just going to mix it in a little container. So I'm going to mix five teaspoons of Paver pole. One, two, three, four, and five, because we don't need a lot for the styrofoam ball. And I'm going to seal that up right away. And then we're gonna incorporate some Paverplast. And we don't need a lot, because I don't want it, well, I, I, I need it so that it's thicker, that it's not gonna be really runny. Um, so I'm thinking we'll put in maybe two teaspoons and see how that goes. So there's no real ratio, it's just you've got to mix it up and see what works. Um, works. But right now we've put in five teaspoons of Paver Pole and two teaspoons of Paver Plast. Mix it up until it's all incorporated. And you can see how thick it is. And I think that's fairly good. I don't want it running because I don't want it running off of the ball when I put it on. Um, I might just add a little tiny bit more. Let's say about half of a teaspoon. Oh, shoot. And if I made it and it was too thick, I can always add more power pull to it. This is a great consistency. It's nice and thick and it's just plopping off of the stir stick. So now I'm going to cover the styrofoam ball with it and I'll use just a brush. And I like to make sure that I cover into the holes where the rebar is pushed in so that it's sturdier for that as well. So I'm going all the way down to the bottom of the styrofoam ball. And you can see it's quite thick, so it's giving me a bit of texture as well, which I do want. Um, but afterwards, we will take this mixture and we will add, I will add um, powder sand to it as well, and that will give us an even better texture um, than this is. But we want to save this, whatever's left, 
So I'm just going to cover it in saran wrap. And then when I'm ready at the final finish to cover, put another coat on, this will be ready to use. And we might add a little bit more um, powder plast to it, but at least we can still use this remaining portion. So what I'm doing now is I've poured some of the black powder pull into a separate container so I do not contaminate my original bucket. And I'm going to dip strips of t-shirt into the powder pull and completely um, soak them, saturate them in the powder pull. So the t-shirts have um, where they curl. I like the curl. So I'm going to use that with my petal. I want that curl to be there. So it looks like the petal is, is you know, curling up and uh, gives it some a lot of texture. So you wanna make sure that all of the strip of powder pull or the strip of cotton t-shirt is completely saturated. You don't want any white showing because that will let water in if it's outside and it will degrade. So I'm gonna pull the t-shirt so you can see how the curl, it's curling. And I'm going to put that on the flower and have it drape over top of the, I'll show you here. So I'm going to push, push it into the powder plast powder pull mixture and the curl I like and I'm going to have this just over top of the wire frame. Now I want some of the petals to have a little curl at the end, some not, um, so I will do that as I go along. Okay, so I've got another strip here that is, and I'm going to overlap the other petal and keep going like that. And they will stick together if you just push them together a bit with your fingers. And they will stick together and they will make a nice seal. So we continue to do that all the way around. Dip, dip our t-shirt, petal, and just pure powder pull, nothing added to it. Make sure it's saturated, make sure every piece of it is covered. Then I'm going to just pull so that it gives me a little bit of curl and I'm going to add it to the flower. Oh, and I'm going to overlap it. I'm going to attach it to the styrofoam ball and I'm going to overlap it slightly. so that it kind of covers the frame. You don't see the frame underneath, but you have some nice little curls on the ends and along the sides as well. Okay, and your hands will get goopy, that's okay. Um, and we'll wash them off in the bucket that I have beside me when they're getting crum crumbly. Like they, the powder pole will get really hard and it'll start to crumb and then it will put crumbs on the petals and I, that I don't want. Saturate it and pull it and then add it to your, to your work. Oh, let's add it here so you can see it a little bit better. Add it to the styrofoam ball and then let it curl around and overlap. So I've washed my hands and um, just in a pail. You do not want to put powder pole down your sink as it will clog your plumbing. So I always wash my hands in a separate pail and then I will dump it outside because it's environmentally friendly and uh, there's no harm to any animals for it. And actually, a lot of times I will dump it into some of my outdoor plants and it does help, I think, for them to grow. So I'm running low on powder pole in my little container. So I'm going to put in a little bit more. And 
and that hopefully will do pretty close to getting this completely done. So here's another piece of t-shirt that I've cut and I've got a point in it and I'm just going to dip it into the paver pole. Um, take off some of the excess and make sure that the petals are all um, covered. No white of the t-shirt is showing. And I'm going to continue to lay it, stretch it and lay it around on the, onto the flower for the petals. Okay, overlapping as I go. Another petal. There's a little piece of the petal, still white. So I've just used my fingers and um, made sure that it's completely covered. Stretch it, overlap it. And once I have these all put on here, I will um, take some saran wrap and I will make it some little balls and I will put that underneath the petals, some of the petals, so that it raises off of the, of the table here. Um, just to give them some extra texture and it won't stick to the um, saran wrap. So I pulled that, stretched it, got a little curl in it, and I'm just placing it over top again here. Again, dip it, make sure you've got it all, everything coated. And this is a really nice little project and they, they really are stunning. Um, I've sold a few of them and uh, I've got a few that I've given as gifts and everybody seems to, to like them. And I donated some um, for the SBCA as well to raise money, so. Okay, so I've washed my hands in some warm water in a bucket. Please do not do it in the sink because it will plug your sink, your plumbing up, and you do not want, do not want that. And I just dumped the water a little bit ago into my plant outside. So now what I'm doing is I'm just using some saran wrap before these petals dry, and I'm gonna just cut a cut a few and make some little balls with them. And it's just so that I can put up, have some of the petals aren't completely on the, on the floor or on the thing. So I'm just going to take these, bunch them up, and every once in a while, I will put them underneath the petal just to bring it up and give it more texture. I think it looks really great when when uh, it's not completely laying flat. So it won't stick to the saran wrap. So I'm just a few petals just to give it more depth, more dimension. And I like to do this before it dries. Um, you can still do it after it dries. Um, heat it up with a hair dryer so that you get some motion out of it and it's flexible. It can You can still move move the petals then but um, I like to do it just shortly after I've I've got the first round done um, so here another petal I want to bring up a little bit and let them dry with this the saran wrap underneath it's no harm to it 
it will come right off. I suppose my arm's in the way here. Say, you know, just crunch them up, you know, just a little, a little bit here and there. So I want to see how many petals that I have. So I count them. So I know I, so I may have enough um, to do the center as well. So if we go here, one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28 petals is what we've put on for the first row. So probably want at least 20 for the center. Um, because we're going to scrunch those up a little bit and make more texture out of them as well. So a good 20, 22 maybe even. Just make sure that you've got enough t-shirt cut so that you don't have to keep going back and forth on that. So, All right, so I made sure I've got 24 strips of t-shirt. And um, I think I might probably need a little bit more power pole in my container. So... Put a little bit more in, and that should be good. So we're gonna dip, dip them in, same way, exactly the same way. This time, I don't think I'm gonna stretch them as much because I want to have them crinkled as a crinkle. So I'm going to attach them the same way and I'm going to just kind of crinkle them in so that I get lots of different texture. Okay, same thing, attach them to the ball. And then saturate them, make sure everything's covered again, same as before. And I'm going to just attach it and then just make it all kind of crinkly. Okay. I'm going to continue on until I'm done all the way around. Make sure everything's covered completely. Again, you don't want to see any whites. This one is curled a bit, so I'm going to kind of uncurl it a bit. Attach it there and crinkle it up. <laughs> Sorry if you can hear my dog. <laughs> she pushes her ball around with her nose and she makes funny noises when she does it, so. <laughs> So I want lots of texture so that when we go to dry brush it later, it, it pops out, right? You can see all the textures in it. Make sure it's all covered. Crunch it in there. One more. So I had 24 and I still have two left, but I can still use those too. Since this one had some power pull on it already, I will dip it and use it. And maybe I'll put this one on too because it's there. I think I want a little bit more texture right here. Okay, so that's the second layer. And now we're gonna let this dry and um, work with it a little bit later. And we're gonna finish off 
the texture on the styrofoam ball. So I'll be back soon. So I still have some power pole left in the container that I put it in. And I'm not going to put it back into my bucket because I don't want it to contaminate it. And Lise had a really good tip when she was doing her courses is to put some saran wrap and make sure that it covers your power pole so your power pole doesn't dry and it doesn't get a film on it um, when you open it up later. So I'm going to do that and then I'm going to put on the airtight lid. And save it for another project. So this is the mixture that I had um, mixed up prior, you know, for the styrofoam ball before we put on the layers of the petals. And I, it's still quite thick. I added another teaspoon of power pull to it just to give it, you know, loosen it up a little bit. And now I'm going to add some power sand. And power sand, I'm going to add the black power sand. And it has a, a gritty texture to it, and that's what I want on the styrofoam ball in the center of the flower. Okay. So I'm going to add in about a teaspoon and see how that mixes up and see if it's the right texture that I want. No real ratio for this. It's just what you would like it to be to be like. Okay, so I just want a, a little bit of a gritty texture to the styrofoam ball. And I think this is actually quite good. It's thick. And I know you probably can't see it very good, but it you can see the granules of the sand a bit in it. I think I might add a little bit more sand. Sorry, I'm kind of all over the place with that. Um, maybe another half a teaspoon. Well, three quarters mostly. <laughs> Okay, that looks better. Lots of grit in it that I want. So I'm just going to use a paintbrush that I used before when I painted the, the center of the, um, of the flower. I washed it just in hot water and dried it out. You want to get as much water out as possible. Oh, I see a little white thing there. Um, because you don't want to compromise the product with water. So this is quite thick and I'm really going to just kind of dab it on and I want it to cover where I've attached the petals. So I'm going to dab it and make some texture out of it but I want to cover those petals just to give them some extra strength to attach. You can do this when the ball dries too, and it all dries. Um, I'm gonna do it right away. But I wanna make sure that I cover all of those petal ends that are attached to the ball. And by covering the petal ends, it kind of seals it too, so that no water will get into it as well, right? So, and compromise when it's outside and it's raining or it's snowing. Um, my flower's been out outside for the last mm, year and a half or more, and it's still fine. It's the one that I showed you at the beginning. And it's been out in snow and rain and everything. <laughs> All right, I think I've got lots of nice texture on here. 
Okay, so we're gonna stop here and I'm gonna let this dry overnight and then we'll come back and do the dry brushing tomorrow. Yeah, it's taking shape, it's taking shape, and I know you're getting excited to start making those flowers, right? Don't forget, you will need Power Paw Black, yes, right here for you. You will need the Power Sand Black, yeah, here for you, and the Mother of Pearl, you're going to see in the next segment, the Power Color, you do need that, so if you don't have, oh, you should pay attention to this offer. If you are going to go to the website and buy it, you would be paying $54, but today and today only, $43.55. It's a huge, huge savings. And you're also getting the, a collection of rhinestones for free. Yes, super offer, very easy to get. We only sell while we have in stock, right? And you know, there's not a huge warehouse here with this product. So you should take action fast. You have a button on the side of the video and the website and the bottom. Go, go take care of that right after we end the show because, you know, you never know. If you're in the last in line, I don't know. I, I may feel sorry for you. I don't want to cry, okay? Let's get to know more about one of the products from the PowerPoint line. This is Danielle with Curious Mondo, and we're going to cover another Paverpal product called Paversand. Paversand is a unique product because even though its name implies sand, it is not actually sand, but it gives the look and feel of sand as a texture component to your workpiece. So let's take a look. So we have two different options to choose from. We have the white paver sand, which is a hard as stone option. And then we have our black paver sand, which is a coarse option. So I'm going to show you what the black paver sand looks like inside. So as you can see, it is a powder that can add a different texture and components to your project. So some uses that we would be using these products for would be to blend those with Artstone and Paverpal. You can get a container, mix them in, and then add the Paver sand to give that texture that you're really looking for. And play around with it. The more sand, Paver sand that you add to that, the more coarse that is going to be. So you can add that to your statuettes that you've created and, and prepared with the foil and tape. You can add it to wood, you can add it to glass, you can add it to canvas. So whatever your imagination comes up with. So thank you for taking some time with me today to learn about Paversand. Awesome. Hey, Jane, I know you have more pieces for us. I want to see them. Sure. So here's the little girl that's reading a book. Oh. And she's inside of this frame that looks like a little house. Her dress is a doily that my mother had. And um, I bought this little house at the dollar store and covered that's it with powder pool. Nice. So, yeah. And the doily is like always her. important, right? Just like keeping a legacy. Uh, absolutely. And she sits on a ledge, right? So oh, her, nice. Her, her skirt hangs down. Uh-huh. Very cool. Very cool. And my last piece that I really like as well is this mother and daughter. Beautiful. So she's picking her daughter up. Uh-huh. And swinging her around. Oh, look at that. Yeah. And this is made, her skirt, their skirts are matching and they're made of linen. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Now, I noticed you, you like the Puffer Paul Black quite a bit, right? I can see you have it in most of your pieces. Tell me why. I do. I just think the color, like when you put color against the black, it pops, right? Mm -hmm. I do use quite a bit of gray as well, and I just received the white, which I haven't uh -huh. used yet. 
Oh, you're going for a treat. When, yeah, when you put the color to it, it, it really shows. Very cool. Very cool. Now, Jane, you started your journey uh, as a sculptor here not too long ago, right? But you, you right. took action, you learned, you took courses, and then you got the certification to be able to give classes. What are your plans for the future? Tell me a little bit about that. Well, I'm hoping to have a bunch of courses. I, I really like teaching, and um, I think my, my career um, gave me the confidence to stand in front of people and do courses. Uh -huh. So I'm really hoping we open up that I can run a course at least one or two each month. Mm -hmm. That's very cool. Do you plan to do shows or put your pieces in galleries as well? There's not a lot in my area. We're, we're a very small um, place, but um, there are a, a lot of trade shows and craft shows and, and stuff. So I think once things get moving a little mm -hmm. bit more, I will do that, absolutely. That's very cool. Have you sold any of your pieces or you don't like to deal with this part or tell me? Yeah, I've sold a few flowers and a couple other um, um, sculptures. So it's, it's getting out there. And, you know, I did a trade show just after I was certified and I had my herons there and people were just unbelievable. They couldn't believe that they were made out of a T-shirt. Yes. And that you could be put in, put in the garden right yeah absolutely absolutely yes. yeah i i always like the this new possibility that we have for example when we do sculpting right because again the normal process of you creating a sculpture turning that into bronze is a very complicated and expensive process and what this does for us is to be able to create garden sculptures for a fraction of the, the price but i would say when we're talking to people they think this is stunning T-shirts, doilies, old bed sheets. How can it be? And I can put it in my garden. Yeah, they're amazed, and I'm amazed too. It's it's a it's lovely to be able to recycle things that could go in the landfill, and um, and make a beautiful sculpture out of it that will last for years and years. Yes, it is really a, a great mission, actually, right, for us. Uh, independent of, our, of your thoughts about climate, we are recycling and giving a new purpose for things. And this is always a good thing, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, Jane, we are going to watch now the last part of the tutorial, and when I come back, I, I want you to inspire people. I'm going to ask you for some final words to our friends here, right? And I, I want to, you to leave them pumped up about this, okay? All right, I'll try. <laughs> okay, let's watch part number three. Hi, so this morning, I the flowers completely dry and I have all these little um, rolled up balls of saran wrap that I'm just going to take out from underneath where I had the petals sticking up like I say they're easy to get out some of them are a little you have to give a little tug but for the most part they are easy um, to remove and I'm lifting up my flower as I go and I'm just removing them all. And see, it, it wasn't stuck um, too bad to the saran wrap. So, all right, so I've got them all off. And now what I'm gonna do is just highlight um, the petals. So I picked out a couple of colors. This one is emerald and it's uh, shiny, it's metallic. This one is a deep sapphire metallic. And I think I might um, brush on the ball, the center, with a brushed silver. But I'll, I'll decide when I'm closer to getting the petals all dry brushed. So we're going to dry brush them. And I've got a couple different sizes of brushes here. Doesn't really matter what size you use. Um, but I'm gonna use this, the larger one for most of the outside petals and probably the smaller one for the inner petals. So I'm gonna use the emerald green metallic 
for the outside petals. And you don't need too much because you're going to dry brush this. And I've got a paper towel here so that I can dab off some of the, um, the paint. I don't want to do it too heavy. So for the most part, I'm just starting to highlight the little folds in all of the petals. And then I'm going to go back and paint a little bit of the inside as well. So like I say, it's just a dry brush. You load it with some paint. I'm going to dab off excess. And then I'm going to go and highlight my petals. And I'm trying just to highlight the outside petals with this and not touch the in inner petals. This, as I'm going, I guess I am going to um, do a little bit of the inside of the petals as well not just the highlights of the, um, of the folds and creases. I really like this color on the black powder pole. Um, it really, really highlights it and, sh and makes it shine. I hope you can see the shine on this. And we're all the way around. All right. <clears throat> I think that's good. Okay. And now I'm going to use the sapphire, deep sapphire. Oh, it's very pretty, very dark. So I'm changing to my smaller brush. Um, I'm not sure if it's metallic enough that I wanted, so. I might change the color, but I'm going to go around it anyways <clears throat> and maybe use a bit of a silver to highlight, to highlight more. Yeah, I don't, it's a nice color, but I want it more metallic than this. So I'm all the way around and I'm going to go and check my stash and see if I can find um, another one. Okay, so I found another one in my stash and it's Sapphire Metallic. This is all acrylic paint that I'm using. So let's see how that one works for us. It's quite a bit lighter 
than the other one. So I think that might be better. Oh yes, I'm liking this a lot better. I hope you can see it on the video. It's quite a bit lighter. And it's highlighting a lot better. It's for a more pop of the color, right? So. I think the other one was just too dark on the the black powder pole and that's why it it wasn't showing up as as good as this one is as being a lighter color so I hope you can see that <clears throat> it's um it really pops out now okay um i'm gonna try a little bit of silver on the center and uh, just to highlight a bit of the texture that I got in there with the um, Paver Pole, Paver Plast, and this Paver Sand. So I've decided for the center of the flower, I'm going to use Satin Finish Josephine Varnish that is from, um, made by Paver Pole, and Mother of Pearl um, Paver Color. You don't need very much. And what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna dip my brush into the Josephine varnish, just slightly. And then I'm gonna dip it into the Paver color. Sorry about my pup there. Keisha. And this powder is very, very fine. So you want to make sure you put the lid on it again, right? So, and again, we're just going to do kind of a, a dry brush and I'm just going to touch the edges. I just want a little pop on them. I think she wants to get into the filming. She was pretty good yesterday. <laughs> okay. So yeah, I like that. I think that looks gives it another dimension. So we need to finish off the bottom of the flower. So what I'm gonna do while the paint is, is drying a bit, so I'm gonna cut a to-go cup And use this end to support the flower so I can turn it upside down and it's got a stable fairly stable um, spot to sit on otherwise it'll be teetering back and forth so this is how much we still have left of the t-shirt so we've got quite a bit right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a circle approximately that size, and I'm going to press it in the, the rim of the wreath. So again, I think I said the wreath is around nine inches, or eight and a half, I think. Just Let's just check. So the insider is around eight inches. 
which is about 20 centimeters. So I've cut the circle, definitely not a perfect circle, but that's okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the mixture that we had yesterday of the Paver Pole Paver Plast. And I think this also has the sand in it. And I'm gonna paint the circle with it. Just to seal it, you wanna make sure that you seal everything so that um, nothing is exposed and that uh, it is waterproof, especially when putting any of these um, things outside. You want to make sure that water cannot get in and penetrate and um, ruin your sculpture. I could use just pure paver pole as well, but since I've already has, have this mixed, I may as well use the rest of it to seal, seal in the back, okay? All right, so while this is wet still, I'm going to dip my circle and get it soaked in powder pool. And again, I still had some left from yesterday and I hope it's enough. Um, I think I might pour a little bit more powder pole into it. Again, it's only been sitting for the night, but I want to make sure that everything is still incorporated and stir it up as well as I can. Okay. Make sure everything on the bottom is incorporated into it. So, all right. Just going to add a little bit more to my container here. And then I'm going to saturate for the back of the flower. Make sure all of it is, there's no white still showing. Check both sides of your circle, just to make sure that everything is good. Yeah, but one side is really saturated good and this other side still has some white spots. So we'll just keep going over and turning their work over and over and over and uh, making sure that it's all, every piece of it is saturated. Especially in the curls, because it does tend to curl. So uncurl it and make sure that there are no white spots. Okay, I think this is completely covered now. And so I'm just going to put it over and I'm going to kind of push it in to the flower, the back of the flower. And I just want to make sure that this is <clears throat> all sealed up. There's a little white piece there. It's of styrofoam from the ball. And I want to make sure that this is completely sealed And if there's any, you have some left, you can always go over it a little bit on the edges just to make sure they're, they're covered. Okay. So this is basically the end of the course. Um, it's, I hope you enjoyed it. And this flower will dry and I will let it dry for a week or so. Um, two weeks before it can go outside 
and then I will varnish it. Um, only because of the acrylic paint and I don't want any of the color to, to fade. So I will varnish it after it's dried. It has to be two weeks before you can put it outside. A week is long enough to let it dry before you varnish, um, but two weeks completely before it can go outside. So there, I hope you enjoyed the class and um, I hope to see some flowers that you're making. Thank you for watching. So this is the finished flower. I hope you enjoyed this class and I hope we see lots of flowers on Carrie's Mundo and I Love Arts and Crafts. Thank you for watching. Ah, isn't that amazing? And I bet you're just thinking, I'm going to make a blue one, then I'm going to do a more realistic sunflower, and then, oh, I have that friend, she loves uh, shades of green, I'm going to do make one as well, right? Yes, because that's how it works. We get inspired, and then we start sharing what we make, and that, that can be the beginning of a, of a very beautiful journey for you, right? Just don't forget to always have the right materials. It's not like you can get something similar here. No, you can't, right? If these flowers are going to go outside, guess what? You need this power power black and you need it today. You need the power sand. There's so many cool things you can do with the power sand. There, it's really a must for you to have. And the power colors, they are all awesome to mix with power pearl. This one is the mother of pearl. You just watch that. Instead of paying $54.70 for the products if you bought them separate, get the bundle today while supplies last only for $43.55. And you are also going to receive a collection of rhinestones to put in your flowers, make them shiny. Did you see when she showed the ballerina all that shine? Yeah, you can make that using uh, rhinestones too. So do it today. There's a button, there is the website. You have everything that you need not to miss this opportunity. So get that, get that, get that right now. Hey Jane, remember I asked you, we need to inspire them. We need, you know, we need to get our heads dirty with power pole, all of them. So tell me, what would you say to people that are thinking about, maybe I should try this, I don't know. Maybe I could call me an artist, I don't know. What would you tell them? The possibilities are endless. And it's like bringing out your inner child, really. You get to play in the mud, so to speak, in the power pole and create and it's beautiful and you know what you can do anything you want to with this product it's just fabulous and it inspires people and it's just something that you know you can bring out of you that you never knew you had exactly find new things inside us right that sparks joy not only for ourselves but for other people that alone is worth trying isn't it Absolutely. It's just like when I started teddy bears and I'd look at somebody walking down the street with a fur coat or a fluffy <laughs> coat and I think, oh man, that would make a nice teddy bear. It's just <laughs> like power pole. I look at things in nature or with people or the other artists and I think, oh man, that is beautiful. And I can do that. I think I can do that. Yeah. And you yeah. can. You can, and you get into a different uh, line of thought. Like every time now that I open a box that came in the mail, of course I look what's inside, right? But then I think, oh, this box is good quality. Yeah. <laughs> if I put like some that. tape here, oh, we can turn this into a sculpture. So you start seeing things in a different way, right? Absolutely, and that happens just, it just happens because you know you can do something different and you know that something so simple, you can make something out of it. True, true, very cool. Thank you so much. I know it, it, get, it takes some work for you to prepare that tutorial, right? It's not easy and, and we said, can you create and can it be just this long? And you did it and it turned out to be a beautiful flower. I hope you come back here very, very soon. And I'm really, really happy that by watching something uh, at Curious Mondo, you found a new passion. You know, I hope, I really hope we, we could spread that out. So I hope with your classes there, you can also spread that out all the time. Absolutely. I love Curious Mondo and I have a huge collection of your courses. So. <laughs> nice. Cool. I want to see yeah. the pieces. <laughs>
Yeah. Jane, again, thank you so much. And, you know, I hope you come back here next year as well. And we'll keep this conversation going, right? Thank you, Shahar, and your team. It's been fabulous. Thank I hope you. you enjoy the course. I, oh, yes. Oh, yes. Thank you. Now it's time for the biz tip. Okay, my biz tip for this week is do not judge your audience. Yes, that is a very important concept. You know, it's very easy for us to start judging who can and cannot buy from us. I've seen this happen many, many times. For example, you might be on a trade show, on a uh, holiday bazaar, something like that, and you see that people are not buying, or, you know, one vendor starts talking to the other. Common one that you hear is, oh, these people don't have money for these pieces, and things like that. Or you're even talking and negotiating uh, with someone, and you might be internally thinking, I don't think she has the money to afford what I have to sell. This is a very, very, very big mistake. Never judge your audience. Understand that they have to make the decision if they have or not money to buy from you. Not only that, it's also you never know the network behind the person. You know, they might be there just walking around on flip-flops, wearing sweatshirts, and still have a very healthy bank account. Or they might be there, even in their pajamas, just looking at the things, and they may have thousands of followers on a social media or have tons of friends. And they may say, hey, I saw this garden sculpture is to die for. You need to get in touch with this lady. So it's very important for you not to judge them and especially start having some type of attitude like, uh, uh you're not my buyer because you may be closing very big doors by doing that. Let them figure out what they have to do in order to pay you. If they have the money, if they have to take out from different bank accounts, it doesn't matter. It's up to them, not to you. That is very important because sometimes we may miss big opportunities by judging others. Hi everyone. Are you excited to start working with Paverpol? Then why not become a certified Paverpol instructor? The certification course is designed to help people earn a second income by hosting Paverpol classes. In the classes, you will learn how to use the Paverpol products, and you'll get to learn a little bit about the business side of things. This can be a life-changing and very fun experience. The Certified Teachers course in the US is an online course where you will learn how to use all of the Paverpol products. You will also build three different projects that you will later turn in for critique and certification. To learn more, go to paverpolamerica.com. This was a great show. I hope you have enjoyed and learned a lot. Don't forget to make many flowers to get your power skills going. I'm Shahar Boyaya. I'm going to be here with you next week. So join me. Thank you so much. <laughs>